This was supposed to be a campaign video, but sadly, because the devs keep resetting the save games, I could toss a whole bunch of pre-recorded videos because, well, I was very nicely starting up a new campaign, and then the dev said, yep, we're going to reset the saves anyway, and I thought, well, fuck. There goes my work, uh, there go the campaigns. So we're going to have to wait until 1.06 goes stable. Until then, I want to show you something funny that I found with the German destroyers. The year is 1900, and I found that this works best in the earlier years. Here is what is up. If you have the large torpedo boat hull, and you build that out with a very modest torpedo slash funnel armament, I mean, you don't need a lot, then you can actually get a lot of firepower out of this small ship. It's a lot of fun to have these things just derping around. I don't need that. I need about 32 knot speed so I can stay ahead of the enemy. We're going to go for the Group 1 armor, double hull bottom, all the anti flood, standard ball cats. That's fine. Rangefinder, I think coincidence is good. More base accuracy to work with. Now, the deal with these things is the guns, the firepower. I had these in the campaign. They're fantastic. Are they effective? Yes. Um, do they look good? You be the judge. It's just a really funny boat to use. Balancing them out though, not so funny. But there are not that many components and if you just mess around with the torpedo tubes a bit, it should be feasible. Because here's what we're going to do. We're going to make these 5.9 inch long barrels. That's a really big gun for a torpedo boat. And this is without buffs. Now, their range currently is 10.6. If you change the type of uh, shell power, or the, the shell charge, if you change the type of propellant, especially later on, you can get some really high-end shells. I'm going to go with heavy shells. I'm going to get these, I think, the nose fuse, so I can still set a fire or two, especially with picric acid. Uh, picric acid 1 is a fantastic fire starter. And if you just shoot battleships enough, they will die. More importantly, what the battleship cannot do generally is spot you. Because you're so small. You can make that an even bigger advantage by lowering the ship's draft. And by doing that, you are exposing yourself to a bit more risk when it comes to flooding. But the, the upside is you're a much smaller target. You can even go so far as changing the beam. This is going to make the ship even smaller. It also makes it less of a stable firing platform. So keep that in mind as you're messing around with these settings. Something else that I found, you can put just all round maximum armor on it. Uh, it's weird to have maximum armor on DD. People are saying don't do it because it's just going to give you overpens. It's just going to, or well, no, sorry, it's not going to give you overpens. It's going to give you just enough um, armor, if you will, to stop enemy shells and stop enemy shells in the sense that they will actually hit you and do full damage. That has not really been my experience. I found that these ships just do well enough. Balancing them out though, pitch, yeah, just don't pay too much attention to that because it's really difficult to balance that. I'm gonna go with the standard loadout, I'm gonna go with capped ballistic shells, and that means I have, at about seven and a half thousand meter range, 5.6 inches of armor pen, which is generally enough to make life on the enemy very difficult. Let's see, can we do 35? Yep, I still have some, <laughs> I still have some room to work with. Um, spacious quarters. Because something you need to know about the current version of 1.06 beta, your ship can surrender. That's new. Your ship can surrender. If you lose more than 45% of your crew, your ship surrenders and is considered lost. So keep that in mind if you are playing this campaign or if you're playing this uh, version of the beta. They changed it already, but it is still um, it's still a work in progress. It's definitely a factor that you need to start getting your head around. Otherwise, you will lose ships simply because they don't have... An oh, hold on. I don't really need that. Uh, simply because they don't have enough crew left. So spacious quarters is more important at this point. And in the campaign, that can mean that the well, your ships and the enemy ships need more crew to effectively be run. 
So you might see more ships in the campaign that are getting mothballed. And that means that the enemy will have them, you just won't actually see them. Because while they are part of the enemy fleet, they don't have any crew, so they're just port queens, essentially. They're just sitting there in their ports waiting for action. All right, there's the V1. Let's take it out for a spin. So here are our victims. A destroyer, a light cruiser, a heavy cruiser, and a battleship for the British. The enemy smokes to the north. We are starting very close together at a mere 10 kilometers. And in this era, I have found that the enemy is generally worse worse at detecting destroyers than the destroyers are detecting the enemy. This is very important because it means that your destroyer can fire from stealth. And that really goes a long way into keeping your DDs alive. People, if you could just maintain some form of formation. Here. Range, 4.8 kilometers, and that's relative to the V4. I have spotted the cruiser. The cruiser has not spotted me. And this is where everything is going to revolve around. Doing this in a later era means that the tower spotting for other ships has sufficiently evolved to the point where they will spot you, well, at least a few, well, not a few dozen, but a few kilometers, potentially as much as 10 to 15 kilometers more than you spot them. That's a problem. Because it means you'll simply not be able to hit them uh, without them already blowing up your destroyer. But here you can. I'm now at 4.2. They still haven't seen me. I have already seen their battleship. And note the accuracy. This is a destroyer from the 1900s. It takes a long time to reload these guns at 12.9 seconds. But I can shoot with 24% accuracy every time I fire a shot. You can see it's getting really quite close to that cruiser. I'm also getting my ships really quite close to that cruiser, so we're going to start to disengage a bit and prepare to maintain a range of about four, four and a half. There. That was a parcel pen against a cruiser. Range. Now I've been spotted. So you spotted the V3. About three kilometer range. And here is your little minion. Their destroyer, which is armed with one, no, two 5.6 inch guns and a couple of smaller ones. Judging by the amount of funnels that they have, I suspect that they have a lot of speed. So they might need to get taken down, but a destroyer is generally much harder to hit. So I'm very skeptical about my chances of hitting these guys already. But if I target the Amphion, even if she's in the smoke, even if I'm maneuvering, I can still hit them fairly reasonably. We're just going to do that with HE, because all the armor piercing is essentially not working. Come on. A couple of hits. There. Damage to the main tower. Ships on fire. How many bulkheads? Many bulkheads. Look at that. Destroyed main gun. Partial pen. This cruiser does not have a lot of armor. But... It's a light cruiser. It's the thing that should be hunting down destroyers. It, in fact, is being hunted. Whether this is something that will get patched out, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if this is something the devs want to have in here, or if it's something that you can currently, uh, with the right circumstances, sort of exploit. I'm sure exploit's the right term, but if you can... Well, let's say you can make it work this way. Look at this. Four and a half kilometer range. I have a pretty decent chance to pen with armor piercing. There goes your engine. Most of the ship on the bow is on fire. They have lost almost 18% of their crew. And this is where that let's just burn shit down tactic of mine seems to be working. How many of their main guns are functional? Yeah. They have two five points... Two five, yeah, 5.2 inch guns on the bow which have been destroyed. The only one available is the one on the port side. I believe some of the casemates have already gotten destroyed. So this cruiser is having a really rough time trying to deal damage against my destroyers and so far has not hit me even. They haven't even been able to hit me. Hello destroyer. Oh, that's their heavy cruiser. Turn back. Destroyed another main gun. Is that the last on the bow? No. Must be one on the stern then. Destroyed funnel. 
Or no, they might consider a four inch gun also a main gun on this ship. Partial pen fire. Now, in case you go, yeah, but they have no veteran crew. Correct, they have a regular crew. Even with a regular crew at 1.4 kilometer range and I'm not using smoke, they can't hit me. You're just so small with this thing. And you can see what the debuff is. Target small size or target ship size, minus 70%. Target fast speed, 73.9%. This is massive debuffs and especially if you start hitting your victim, the damage instability becomes so much that you get another 50% debuff. Also, their uh, hull stability in tower yeah, they got a massive pitch on this ship. This thing is a, a terrible platform. Probably because they got those guns on the bow, making the bow extremely heavy. Um, this o Overall, the whole ship is terrible. A heavy cruiser diadem also has this issue. They're pitching up and down a lot, so the ship is just constantly bobbing up and down, making for a terrible firing platform, and they too have less than a percent chance to hit at 2 kilometer range. Now... I think the light cruiser has been sufficiently... Oh, there you go. Neutralized. Let's go for the heavy cruiser. Arguably more of a threat. I can't very well pen it with armor piercing, so we're going to go with HE again. Uh, let's get a bit more range. And diadem, standard bulkhead, spacious quarters. The rudder's been damaged. The secondary gun's been destroyed. The ship's on fire. They still haven't hit me. More ship was on fire. <laughs> About 10% of the crew is going to be lost. There you go. 10.6, 10.7, 12. Ac chance to hit? 40%. One thing I'm struggling with a bit with this patch is that you got these long barrel guns and they're kind of a no-brainer. It's so good. They're so useful that it is really hard to justify not taking them. And you can also go with the shorter barrels, which gives you a lot more rate of fire. So arguably for a brawler, that might be more suitable. Just a whole bunch of shorter barrel guns. And that way you just pump out so much shells, or so many shells, that the enemy is going to succumb to the, the sheer volume. It's just that I found the longer barrels to be far more successful. Far more successful than any of the shorter barrels. As you might have seen in my recent Taskmaster video, the one from a week, two weeks ago, where I went full short barrel. Uh, sawn off or sawed off shot kind of thing, the title of that video is. Look at that, this cruiser is retreating. 18% crew lost. They have finally been able to land a hit. For 12 damage. My destroyers have done 6,000 points in damage. That's a lot of damage. The ship is just burning down. They're flooding. Their main tower is taking a lot of hits. They've lost 22% of their crew. These are just the destroyers from hell. They can't be hit. At least not with their tech. Not with their crew training. And not with various different ship types. This is a veteran crew, mind you. This is the best stat bonuses that you can get. They can't hit me. So, you can really abuse this mechanic. Let's see, Rodney is quite close. Yeah, Rodney's gonna do quite a bit of damage here. You got maximum bulkheads and cramped crew quarters. So let's see if I can just have this ship surrender. That'd be funny. Just to show if I can show that mechanic. Damage the main gun. Wow, you guys are terrible shots. It's a good thing they're green level crew. 7% lost. You know what? Torp it if you want to. Never mind. Ooh, that was a pretty decent hit. This was a hit... For deck? Okay. You're gonna have to explain to me how that hits. Um... Poor deck on the V1 was hit by the 12-incher on this ship. I know the muzzle velocity is really low, but it's not a mortar. I mean, we're 400 meters out. This thing has a shell velocity. I'm thinking it was HE. Shell velocity of 600 meters per second. So this was less than a second. 
but apparently it went in a complete arc, landed on top of the deck of the V1, <laughs> and I partially penned it. I don't understand. Because the Rodney with 12.7 inches at less than a thousand meter range is 8.1 inches of high explosive armor. But apparently when you're hitting the deck, half an inch. Wow. Okay. Gonna torp it yet? No? Don't feel like it. Okay, fine. We're gonna continue our little circle the prey. What? Destroyed the main tower. Oh man. That's going to make their damage control efforts a lot harder. And just look at how we're circling the prey here. This poor battleship. It's very heavily armed. Two 12.7s, a couple of 9.4s, two... Uh, no, make that four 11.3s. A whole bunch of 3.3s, a couple of 6.4s. We don't care. The DDs just don't care. There's not a good pan on the V1. Rodney has lost 20% of her crew and both towers. If you lose superstructure, if you lose towers, then your damage control is going to go right down the drain. Add to that that they have cramped quarters. So there is not a lot of crew. Or at least there is essentially less crew than what you would like. Because the less crew that you have, the more things start to snowball. Because less crew means less control, as you can see on the bottom right-hand side. And that means less abilities to damage control. So, their whole ship is burning down. That means more crew is getting burnt to a crisp, essentially every minute. And they have less and less and less crew to make that fire go away. So, even against a battleship, and this is a 20.3 million battleship, this is a... 3.6 million dollar destroyer, which for this area is pretty expensive. But it's just taking on battleships and winning. Look at that, almost the whole ship's on fire. I might be able... Actually, I'm thinking it's going to happen within the next few minutes. Unless they put these fires out soon. Um, I'm going to be able to just torch this whole thing. Extensive fire is going to cause the uh, complete loss of the Rodney. I've done 11,000 damage. I've taken about 1,000 on the V1. That's it. The V1 lost a bit of structural integrity, but not nearly enough to have me worried. So, if you want to cheese your campaign, if you want to have some fun with destroyers, I recommend you do it early. Because in the 1940s, enemy spotting capabilities, enemy radar capabilities are just too good. They are so good that it is very difficult to pull shit like this off. It's not impossible, but it is quite hard. Because you're just going to get spotted, you're going to get shot at, and you're going to die before your little destroyer can get into range. But early on, they can't see you, and even if they can see you, they very likely can't shoot you. Well, they can shoot you alright, like the Yarrow is doing, but uh, no joy there. Rodney, look at that, 40, no, 36. 536% crew lost. This thing has nothing on me. I've destroyed a main gun? Are you for real? It's not that one. It's not that one. Yep, it's this one. The port side 11.3 inch has been destroyed. Probably due to taking too much fire damage. That's what I imagine. Now, I'm very curious to see in the comment section what your opinion is on this. Do you think this is good? Do you think this is bad? Is this something that we should have in the game? Or is this something that is just utter shit? There we go. Got her. Extensive fire. Ship's been destroyed. Damage taken? Almost nothing. <laughs> is this something that's desirable for this game, yes or no? I think it's a bit too strong right now. I think these long barrels just give you way too many advantages and should be toned down a bit. But that's my opinion. What's yours? Let me know down below in the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick video. If you have any further requests or suggestions for videos, by all means, let me know down below in the comments. And I thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.